I can see the summit. I didn't expect us to be this close. The Hamid is the best. Look at these views. Is this even real? I don't want to leave. This is unlike anything that I've ever experienced. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing well. If you're new here, my name is Habiba. I'm a full-time adventure traveler, and this is my YouTube channel, Tracking Pals, where I share my adventures traveling around the world. Today, I am in the beautiful village of Imlil in the outskirts of Marrakech, and the reason I'm out here is to climb Mount Tubqal. It's the highest peak in Morocco and the highest peak in North Africa and the Arab world, and it's been on my bucket list for as long as I can remember. And I'm so excited that I'm finally out here to give it a try. But before our adventure starts, I want to show you the view out of my balcony from the guest house where I'm staying, which I will give you a tour of later on in this video. But first, this view. The view out of the balcony is amazing. Look at all the mountains, the valley, the villages, snow up top so many trees i was told that most of these trees are either pecan trees cherries or apples i tried some pecans yesterday and i have to be honest they're probably one of the best that i've ever had i was just told that breakfast is ready so i'm gonna head upstairs to fuel up before we start our adventure for the day let's go i have to see how much of this food i can fit in this breakfast is great oh my gosh this is my favorite it's got tea and <laughs> if you guys haven't had msemen before, it's such a popular traditional Moroccan flat bread. So good. I usually eat it with the cheese and honey. Today it'd probably be cheese and jam. We started our adventure from the small village of Mizik. Imli is surrounded by many small villages with houses carved into the mountain. An incredible sight as we make our way to the trailhead. We've been hiking for a bit now and we just got to the sign of the national park. Earlier on the trail, we had uh, to go through the security checkpoint. So you have to show up with your ID and you must have a guide with you since the incident that happened a few years ago. So we had that done and we've been trekking through these beautiful views. It's spectacular. The weather is great and couldn't be happier. We've been hiking for quite a bit now. And uh, I think we're getting close to our next rest stop. What I'm liking so far about this trail is that there are uh, many points at uh, there are many points on the trail where you can stop to grab some snacks. I was told that there's even rock and mint tea and orange juice on the trail, which I'm very, very excited about. So I'm hoping that this next stop will be the one. There's the orange juice. Salam, lava sidi. Alhamdulillah. Chi asa jil limon? Jil abato. Bi chi asa limon si? Din na wahed juz. So that's what I was talking about. Uh, there's a vendor right here. You can grab a drink or snacks. And I can hear a waterfall all the way out, but I'm sure that we will see it as we advance on the trail. A few seats right there, over here. And we're also sharing the trail with a bunch of people this morning. We're getting close to our next checkpoint, Shamharush. There are so many vendors right there. Uh, this site is pretty popular even for people just taking day hikes to get to Shamharush. But there are also a lot of beautiful waterfalls and it's a good spot where you can refill on water. One thing that I've been enjoying about this hike is that we don't have to pack a lot of water. And even my guide, he told me that, you know, just to avoid a lot of waste, I can just hike with half a bottle because there's a lot of water throughout the way and you can refill whenever you need to. But that's the waterfall right there. So neat. We've been also coming across a lot of uh, mules, taking provision to the refuge or helping people pack their luggage all the way up to the refuge. This is actually not my first time at this site because I've been to Imlil before and I made my way to Shamharush, but that was it. I was part of a school trip a long while back, but I'm, I'm happy to be back. We 
came all the way there, we passed Shamharush. And look at these views. For some reason, they remind me of Arizona, just the rock formations and all. I mean, I'm not surprised, it's still the desert. And here's another point where you can stop if you want to grab a drink or a bite to eat. There are so many of them, which makes this hike pretty convenient. We're taking a short break at this uh, rest stop, just like the ones before. You can grab some drinks if you'd like, but I'm really loving the view from here. You can see the whole waterfall that I showed you guys earlier. The views are so epic. And as we're making our way up, all I'm thinking about is that I need more time out here. It's just not enough. You don't get enough of how incredible these views are. We've been trekking for a bit now. I just consulted my map on all trails, which I was very happy to find. And I think we're a little bit past halfway. Elevation wise, I think we are a little bit shy away from 9,000 feet, 9,000 feet, which is not bad. I mean, overall, the trail, pretty easy to follow, well maintained. There are some sections with a lot of loose rocks, but it's manageable. And as always, I'm finding the trekking poles to be super helpful. I'm trekking up the mountain over two days, but there are a lot of people who take three, four days. If you have more days, you can spend them here. And they just sat camp right there to have lunch and it looks like a really, really cool spot down there. In case you have more days to spare, the, the views here are so neat. So many waterfalls. This is amazing. The landscape is uh, pretty different up here since we left Shamharush. The last set of trees we saw were the Spanish junipers, but uh, the climate is so arid right here, it's difficult for trees to grow and thrive. But there are a bunch of shrubs and some dry vegetation. It makes for great vegetation for goats. There are a bunch of goats right here, like few families in the, the village army, they have herds of 200, 300. They just graze here all day long. And I was told that their stable is up there in the mountain where they spend the night. But I need to continue on. Uh, I'm keeping a consistent pace, not too slow, not too fast. But I can't wait to get to the refuge and maybe uh, enjoy some mint tea along the way. That will be a fun treat. We can see some snow on the peaks over there, but that's not quite the peak yet. The summit of Tubkhan is a bit behind it. Oh boy, steep. We just stopped for a lunch break by a small waterfall here. And just like usual, I feel like it's becoming usual for me when I get to 10,000 feet. It just gets hard for me to consume any food, but I force myself to have some snacks and some bread. And uh, But what I like the most are the pecans. Walnuts, they're actually walnuts. And these walnuts are from uh, Imlil, the trees that I showed you guys earlier in the video. These were harvested not too long ago and prepared for our trek today and I absolutely love them. But this is the view, got all the mountains, and in a little bit here, we will continue on to make our way to the refuge. They have a lot of markers on the way to help guide you up. And they look like the Indonesian flag. I see Indonesia everywhere I go. If you are finding my channel for the first time, I do actually have a group trip to Indonesia, to the beautiful island of Bali, and it's taking place from May 7th to May 14th of 2023. So if you would like to join me for eight days of adventuring, hiking, swimming, snorkeling, enjoying the cuisine, the Balinese cuisine and the culture, be sure to check the link in my description box. I will also leave it in the first comments and join me for an adventure of a lifetime in a beautiful island of Bali. Can't wait to see you guys. We're getting pretty close to the refuge. I cannot wait. Right there. Just made it to the refuge and I'm already welcomed by some mint tea. Here in Subkal, there are two refuges. The one behind me right here is by the French Alpine Club. That's where I'm going to be staying for tonight. And then right behind me, right there, is another refuge, Refuge des Mouflons. 
So two options that you have to choose from. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to share more details about the reservation process and how you can make your reservation online before showing up in here. Otherwise, your guide can walk you through how that works. But the view from here, base camp, is just so incredible. And this tea is such a treat. I'm so happy to be here. This is the terrace. A bunch of people hanging out with some drinks. And then that's going to take me up to my bed for the night. These are the dorms. These dorms are mixed, but uh, you know, they're decent, they do the job. Usually, people would either bring their own sleeping bags or they can give you blankets. I asked for two blankets because I know that it's going to get pretty chilly during the night. And this is the view from the window. I was there earlier. I'm gonna make my way to another one. And that's my bag. And right outside of the room, which is right there, is the terrace. Oh my gosh, this view is epic. I just can't believe that this is even real. I think this mountain range, the Atlas mountain range, is unlike any mountain range that I've ever seen. I mean, every mountain is beautiful in its own way, but this is, this is epic. Even when I compare it to Kilimanjaro, it was a freestanding mountain, so there isn't really a range around it. So you see one mountain standing up there, but here, so many high peaks, so many mountains, the snow, the villages, this is, this is incredible. This is unlike anything that I've ever experienced. So I'm gonna make my way up to see the waterfall and see what it's look like from up top. Let's go. Mind you, I'm trucking in my sandals because as we checked in, they asked us to remove our hiking shoes. Understandable, because they're pretty dirty. And they gave me uh, sandals. So just gonna go in and hope to not slip. Signs for the falles, so you gotta be careful up here. Really not that far, so pretty right there so beautiful oh my gosh <laughs> I can't stop marveling at the beauty of the landscape here these mountains are captivating they're taking my breath away and I'm sure if you make your way up here they will take your breath away as well we left the refuge at 4.30 a.m. for the summit push. This morning, we are climbing 3,000 feet up to the peak. It was pretty cold with snow on the trail that required concentration and focus. We're taking a little break. Me and my guide, Sihamid, he's been so incredible and patient with me. But we're taking our break here before the last push to the summit. I, was, I wasn't taking any videos on the way up. It's a little bit exposed. There's snow, crampons are necessary, or at least micro spikes. I'm wearing micro spikes actually, but the views are so spectacular. Attitude sickness is uh, getting the best uh, out of me. Um, I had some stomach issues before I left California, so it's been a little bit hard, but uh, I'm not feeling, you know, I'm not feeling awful. So I'm just gonna take it slowly. You can see the light is out, views are incredible. To be honest with you, I had to throw up, which happened before at this uh, elevation, but uh, not feeling awful though. I'm just gonna drink some water and continue pushing. Right there. Look at this beautiful sunrise. Looking decent. <laughs> the views are impeccable. And I've never seen anything like this. This is amazing. <sighs> I'm pushed. This is the last push. I have a feeling that we have less than 500 feet to climb. Maybe 400 feet. We were definitely past 4,000 meters. But. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Do it. <laughs> My ears are popping. 
we just passed a section right there that was pretty exposed it got me nervous but my guide just told me that it gets worse with more snow it's really exposed oh oh my gosh and this is this is epic oh my gosh i can see the summit <laughs> i didn't expect us to be this close oh my goodness Ah, oh, it looks so bright and nice with the sunrise. Wow. Just made it to the summit of Mount Tubqal. This is the highest peak in Morocco, the highest in the Arab world and North Africa. This is such a dream come true. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. Finally made it. It's a, it's a beast, but it's worth every effort. This is incredible. And the views behind me of the Atlas Mountains range are epic, to say the least. This is so special. We're starting to make our way down from the mountain. I don't think we're going down the same way we're going up. That's my thought, but uh, look at these views. I, I, just, I just wish I could spend more time up here, but we need to make our way down to the refuge. I have to focus because there is snow and there are sections that are a little bit tricky, but I will film whenever I have a chance to. This is the trail where we will be going down on. A lot easier than the other one. I mean, you still have to focus, but it's a lot better so far. This is another trail that takes you up to a different mountain called Ikhibin. Yeah, you can see the trail down there and uh, somewhere out there, the wreckage of a, I don't know if it's an airplane or a helicopter that fell down years ago. So if you make your way up there, you will see the wreckage of the airplane right there. But we're just continuing on. These views are epic. I don't know how to describe it better, but this is what we get to, to enjoy for the rest of this trek. But uh, this trail is definitely better than earlier. Like it is still exposed, but uh, just some concentration and a little bit of scrambling to make your way down. Oh, Si Hamid. Oh, Si Hamid. <laughs> si Hamid is the best. <laughs> My neck is getting sore from looking up and marveling at the beauty of this mountain range. So wonderful. I don't want to leave. This is the view of everything that we scaled earlier. I couldn't film earlier and it was dark, but literally made our way <laughs> through these crazy snow fields. And it's not even the depth of winter. This is November, beginning of November. I can only imagine how it is late in winter. This is crazy. So the refuge, I can see it from up here. All I can think about right now is fresh mint tea. It's right there. That's my guide. That's a few people over there, but the refuge is all the way there. There's still snow. Like this field is a little bit tricky. It's like you don't really have to wear uh, micro spikes right here, but then at the same time you have to be super careful. So that's Subhat for you with snow. My guide is the nicest. Whenever he sees a field or a section with a lot of snow and ice, he sprinkles some rocks just to help uh, my shoe kind of grip to it. I think it's so sweet right there. Sprinkled rocks. We finally made our way back to the refuge. It was an incredible day. There are a few climbers still making their way down, but we are here. The adventure is not done yet. I'm having some Moroccan meat tea. I'm gonna take a break. I need to grab my bag because I left it here. And then we're going to head down and make our way back to Imlil. But check this view out. So cool. This particular section of the trail, I feel as if I'm in Alaska. 
truthfully, one one of the hikes that we took up in Alaska, this, this feels amazing, like it's giving me an Alaska feel. And there are still a bunch of hikers still making their way up the mountain, probably to summit tomorrow. They're probably just going to stay at the refuge, but uh, the trail is uh, not extremely busy, especially this time of the year, but we've been coming across uh, a bunch of other hikers, which is neat, and mules. Mules are doing such a tremendous job transporting provision to the refuge so that they can make food for people, but also transporting luggage. Like some people would spend more than one night up in the refuge, so they transport their stuff as well. But I can't get over this wonderful view. Spectacular. When I was trekking up uh, the other day, I didn't appreciate the beauty of the landscape, especially in this section, because you know how sometimes when you're going up and it's a steep incline, you don't really turn back to see. But this is your reminder if you are hiking, whether you're going up or down, just take a moment to appreciate the landscape in front of you. It's just a humbling experience to see that we are part of something that's really big. Like these mountains are, are huge and we're so tiny in front of the mountains like this. But at the same time, we play an important role in the ecosystem. It's just humbling. ليمون شحال بنين سي حميد is not done with me apparently we're gonna climb some more this time for an epic view which I'm very fine with I just made it finally to my room and I'm so excited. I can't wait to just go clean up, grab something to eat, ooh, some mint tea again. <laughs> but I will see you guys tomorrow for a guest house tour. See you tomorrow. Good morning from Imlil. It's 9.48 and I'm still in bed. I just feel like I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave bed because I'm sore from the past two days, but also I'm not ready to leave Imlil and leave this beautiful village. It's so wonderful. I feel like over the past three days, I only scratched the surface. There's so much to see and do in here. The people in the village are so incredibly kind and generous. Yesterday, before my guide left, he brought me a big bag of walnuts for my parents because I'm leaving Imlil to make my way to Safi where my parents are, say goodbye, and then leave Morocco. But that gesture melted my heart completely and I've honestly been feeling at peace here. I think it's about time right now. I have to get up and uh, pack up, tidy up the room, I'm going to film a quick tour of the guest house like I promised. I'm going to have breakfast and then I will hit the road again. This is the inside of my room. It's three beds, so two over there as a queen and then one. And I'm loving the colors in the ceiling. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. This is the room, simplistic room, very colorful. There's a TV that wasn't actually working because they had a storm in the past few days. So a lot of things were not functioning perfectly, but this is the door. I love the design, so pretty. And this is the bathroom, warm water and all shower I had yesterday was probably the best shower in a very long time. What I love the most is this wonderful view on the balcony. Is this even real? There's a mosque right there so I was here in the call to prayer every day. Lush green trees 
and from this side some of the houses from this village and waking up to this, this view is such a treat so that's for the room gonna head upstairs for some breakfast now let's go the rooms are named after the mountains in this mountain range i think this is edg some of them are not actually in Arabic, like a lot of people who live here, they don't speak Arabic. They, I mean, they do speak Arabic, but they speak, speak mainly Amazigh. This is Tubqal, and this is Tizi. So these are mountains in the high atlas. But this is the house, beautiful carpets all over the place. I'm gonna go upstairs. And this is the room where I would usually have breakfast or dinner. Look at these colors. Oh my gosh, so pretty. And this is the view from the window. Look at that. And this is the terrace. I had tea when I arrived the other day. And look at this, look at this, look at this. So, so beautiful. I just left the village and I will leave you with this incredible view. Just walking my way to Emilil to the center, grab a taxi and make my way to Safi. Thank you so much for watching this adventure. I will have more videos about preparing and packing for Tubqal if it's an adventure that you are interested in, so stay tuned for those videos. My name is Habiba, this is Tracking Pals, and I will see you soon on a new adventure.